Hello, I'm Meg McKinlay and I'm the author of Catch a Falling Star, which has been shortlisted in the Younger Readers category. Catch a Falling Star is a book that's very dear to me. It's been a long time coming, not in the sense that it took me a long time to write, although that's certainly true of all my books, in fact, but in the sense that it draws directly on my own memories of childhood as an 11-year-old girl growing up in country Victoria. So Catch a Falling Star is set in 1979 when a very exciting event was happening and it was global news. It was international news in the pre-internet days. So it was all over the radio and the newspaper and the TV every day for a period of months. And what was happening was that one of the world's first space stations, Skylab, was falling uncontrollably from orbit. It was going to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere. Large chunks would remain intact and fall to Earth somewhere at some point. NASA couldn't really say when or where this might happen, but what they could say was, don't worry, because it probably it won't hit you because the Earth is mostly water and you're probably safe. It's not that reassuring when you're an 11 year old. And I think for me, and probably for many of my friends as well, it was the first time that we really understood in ourselves that randomness, you know, that adults can't control everything, that bad things can just happen. And uh, that's a pretty interesting thing to experience when you're growing up. And I also have vivid memories of my father taking me out at night uh, to look up at the night sky and you could see Skylab going over. They would advertise the orbit paths in the newspaper every day. And so if you went out at the right time in the right place, if you were under an orbit path or near one, you could actually look up and see it. So for these reasons, this is a memory that sort of really glows for me. But that's not a story for me. That's not where a story starts. A story starts when two things that are not connected to each other bump randomly and unexpectedly and for reasons that I can't explain up against each other in my brain. And so at some point my memories of Skylab bumped up against a cartoon that I love. And it's a Peanuts cartoon. If you can picture this, we've got Charlie Brown and Linus sitting with their backs to the viewer and just on a little hill and they are looking up at the starry night sky and there's wordless frames and then at a certain point Linus breaks the silence and says to Charlie Brown, Charlie Brown, if a star fell here, would you be allowed to put it in a bucket and take it home? Wordless frames again and Charlie Brown finally says, well look in the first place, a star is much too big for that. You'd never be able to get it into a bucket. Linus says, oh, you wouldn't? No. And then more wordless frames. And then the very last frame, again, wordless, is just Linus tossing this little bucket away. Charlie Brown can't see it, but the viewer can. And so you can probably tell from what I'm saying that although this is a book about a, state, about a space station, it's not about a space station. It's full of wacky and interesting and cool and exciting things about Skylab because that was just a really odd time. But it's a story about growing up and sort of having to accept that maybe some of the things you want to believe aren't believable. It's a story about the human heart. It's about a family that's struggling to cope with loss and change. It's about a 12 year old girl named Frankie who maybe has a little bit of me in her. Maybe that's why it's dear to me. Maybe I'm just a narcissist. Anyway, um, look, it feels special to me and that's enough. I really hope that it feels a little bit special to you as well.